Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, our final segment now. We've had the action points for this week. Again, our intervene in the Occupy Wall Street, whatever they call themselves, the program being the Wall Street sales tax, the student loan amnesty, stop all foreclosures, no cuts to the social safety net, nationalize the Fed, build infrastructure, 30 million new productive jobs paid for by 0% 100-year blocks of federal credit, $1 trillion per shot, uh, all off budget, federal lending, not federal spending. The other action point, support Sherry Honkala for Sheriff of Philadelphia. Now, a third point, we have an important uh, humanitarian case here. It's highly political. I want you to get ready to write down the State Department uh, switchboard line and the White House comment line. Here we have the Washington Post of today. Gaddafi loyalist injured while in custody. Uh, Colonel Mohammed, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's former intelligence chief was seriously injured while in the custody of Libyan revolutionaries, officials said Thursday. This would be uh, the uh, National Transitional Council. This is Abu Zed Omar Dorda. The uh, militiamen, the, the forces of Belhaj, say that he tried to commit suicide or fell attempting to escape, and he has suffered uh, injuries in the form of a fractured left hip, internal bleeding. He is in intensive care in Tripoli, Libya. I know Colonel, uh, Mr. Abu Zed Omar Dorda is a Libyan patriot and a man of character. Uh, he is a highly westernized intellectual who was fighting for the good of his country. I'm also very concerned about his two sons, Hamid and Mohammed. And um, if we look at this article, we find uh, uh, some other uh, relatives. Adel Khalifa Dorda, his his son-in-law. This is a humanitarian case. These people must not be massacred. Their lives must not be snuffed out. We want uh, U.S. public opinion to mobilize to save them from the fate that may otherwise await them. So I'm calling on listeners to this program to call the following number. The State Department call-in line, 202-647-4000-202-647-4000. Zero, zero, zero. That's the State Department. Hillary Clinton, U.S. ambassador to, to Libya. They're, they're there now. The Libyan embassy here over by the um, Watergate building. They've got to hear that people in the United States are very concerned about possible human rights abuses in the case of Abu Zed Omar Dorda. In the case of Gaddafi, it's clear he was massacred. He was murdered. That's a Class A war crime right there. Nuremberg material. But now let's act preemptively to save the life of Abu Zed Omar Dorda, to defend the life of Adel Khalifa Dorda and the two sons, Hamid Dorda and Mohammed Dorda. And again, I'm telling you that this is a Libyan patriot and a man of character. Uh, and uh, this must not allow, be allowed to turn into a tragedy. The White House comment line, White House comment line 202-456-1111. And we're going to check that number. i got to check another number. We're just going to check this other number here. Uh, but the, this, this, oh, the White House. Yeah, okay, hang on. We just we're just checking this number. Yes. Two oh two four five six one 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 one. All right, fine. Sorry, we're just getting the number two zero two four five six one 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 one. That's the White House comment line. Two zero two four five six one 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 one. So you've got to tell the State Department Hillary Clinton and Obama in the White House and Don Alon at the National Security Council and Samantha Power and Michael McFowl, the lives of these people are of great concern 
to people here in the United States, Democratic voters, primary voters, influential people from around the world, too. Don't hesitate. They've got to hear the voice of world public opinion saying it's time for you, since you talk so much about protecting civilians, these are civilians, they're, they're member. Uh, Abu Zed Omar daughter was a member of the Libyan government, but a, a civilian. And his, his two sons, Hamid Mohammed, were uh, private citizens. So you've got to, they've got to come forward with the importance of saving the lives of these people. Don't let the lawless forces that now seem to rule Libya compound their earlier war crimes by adding to their list of victims. So that is... Uh, that is something that I urge everybody to do. Now, uh, let's see. Let's just also look historically. Uh, where does the current reactionary policy come from? I would just like to, to we're going to devote more attention to this in the, in the coming weeks. But um, what you see now with the various Republican economic programs, we see Mitt Romney, we see Rick Perry, we see Kane. And we see Ron Paul, and the common denominator is to shift the cost of the Depression from the bankers who have caused the Depression onto the backs of working people. And again, people who, those who can't understand that this is what Ron Paul is doing, take a look at Ron Paul's program. The one, the one uh, really negative thing that I forgot to mention last time is he abolishes the capital gains tax. So he's saying we want to subsidize and favor speculative profits. But we want to tax people who work for a living. What is the rationale of this? Why should speculation be favored? Why should it be subsidized? If we're going to have a bias, shouldn't it be the obvious, different, opposite way? That we want to promote wage labor, productive labor, making things, and not give favorable treatment in the tax code into the speculative windfalls, the speculative bonanzas that are covered by the uh, capital gains tax. Now, where does this program come from? Uh, we've had this once before. You can find this in any number of books. I'm getting it out of the Nazi Hydra in America, um, published by Progressive Press of California. We can also get all of my books. Uh, we're talking here about the speech made by Lamat Dupont. Uh, this was the negative side of that family, as uh, my friends have told me in the past. Lamont Dupont addressing the National Association of Manufacturers in New York City, September 17, 1942. And he's talking about winning a war. Now, given the time, 1942, you might think it's the Second World War, but it's really a class war. He's talking about a class war. And he says, are there common denominators for winning the war and the peace? If there are, then we should deal with both of them in 1943. What are they? We will win the war, says Lamont Dupont, 1942. We will win the war by reducing taxes on corporations and high income brackets and increasing taxes on lower incomes by removing unions from any power to tell industry how to produce or how to deal with their employees or anything else, and by destroying any and all government agencies that stand in the way of free enterprise. Oh, gosh. So again, his program, reduce taxes on corporations. The Republicans all do it. Perry, Ron Paul, Romney, Kane. Reduce taxes on corporations and on high income brackets. They all do that, too. Increase taxes on lower incomes, and they all do that, either through this regressive sales tax or other tricks that they have. Remove unions from any power to tell industry how to produce or how to deal with their employees or anything else. Smash the union movement from Walker to all of these Republican presidential candidates. It's all the same. And by destroying any and all government agencies that stand in the way of free enterprise. In other words, don't you dare regulate derivatives. Don't you dare regulate all kinds of sociopathic activities. There it is in a nutshell. We're basically back to the class struggle, the class warfare of the 1930s and the 1940s. So deal with it. And in order to deal with it, arm yourself with programs. 
with those class-based demands that I've talked about and get that, make that into the program of these general strikes that are coming up. See you next week on World Crisis Radio, Topley.net, Webster G. Topley on Twitter.